Are you looking for quick and easy ways to use AI in your writing units? Stay tuned and I'll walk you through how to make student checklists, writing exemplars, and yes, even how to get detailed feedback on your student's text all using AI. And the best part is, it only takes a few seconds. Welcome to AI for Teachers. I'm Jen Twadale. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use the free version of ChatGPT in your writing units. I'll be walking you through how I structure my units using the bump it up method, all the way from making a checklist for your students to giving your students feedback on their text. So let's get started. So when I'm setting up my writing unit, I usually start by creating a checklist for the students and I base that off of the marking guide or rubric. Then I use AI to create a C-level exemplar and an A-level exemplar that I print out really large and put at the back of the room. Following that, I actually get the students to do a pre-test. Now, I know that's probably an unpopular opinion because it means more marking. They don't have to write the entire assessment, but I do find that it's a great way to understand where your students are at. If you have students who are already achieving an A, you know that you're going to need to extend them in the unit. And if you notice you have a student who's well below where you'd expect them for your grade level, you know they're going to need a little bit of extra support going through the unit. And I use the checklist and feedback that's generated from AI to help set their goals for the unit. Following on from there, I teach each of the criteria as it appears on the marking guide. So I start with the things that the students need to achieve in a C, and I make sure I teach that explicitly. Then I teach them everything they need to be able to do in a B level, and I teach those skills explicitly. Then as a class, we take the C exemplar and we bump it up. I'm really wanting to model to students here that you don't need to start from scratch if you're a C, there's a few things that you can tweak and improve to bump up your writing. I then teach the students all of the criteria in the A. And again, as a class, we take the B standard that we've created and we bump it up to an A standard. So once I've taught all of the criteria explicitly on the marking guide, then I get the students to do a midpoint check. So they're doing exactly what I've modeled. They're taking their writing from their pretest and they're bumping it up using the goals that I've set them on their checklist and the feedback that I've given to them. And yes, again, I do take their um, midpoint checks in and give them further feedback and more goals for them before they get to their assessment. It does sound like a lot of marking, but I'm gonna show you right now how to make that quick, easy, and specific using AI. So to get started, I pull up the rubric or marking guide and I actually copy and paste, starting from the C, all of the criteria, and I just put it into a Word document, into a list. Now, if you have students who are below the C, C grade, you can also include the criteria for E or D. However, when I'm setting my students' goals, I'm usually wanting to set them at the C level, so that's why I start there. And I copy and paste each of the criteria, moving gradually from C, down to the A into the Word document. I've tried to create this list using AI, just downloading the PDF of the rubric into chatpdf.com, but I found I wasted more time fiddling around with the prompt. It's easier just to copy and paste in Word to create this list. Once I've put my criteria into a list using Microsoft Word, I then go into ChatGPT Today I'm using the free version and I found it to work quite well. I put in the prompt, turn the following information into table format, put the criteria in the first column and make the second column blank. Then I paste my criteria into chat GPT and you can see it generates out a table for me. Now I usually put that checklist at the back of the classroom and I also actually do a bolder line between the C criteria, the B criteria and the A criteria. And then the students can see how they need to progress through the different criteria to bump up their marks. Now to get this exported out, I find it works best to highlight it all and copy and paste into Excel. 
That's the best way to keep the table format. Next step of the process is to create your writing exemplars. So again, I go into ChatGPT and I use the following prompt. A fantasy text exemplar for year five students. Create it at a C standard, include good and evil in the story, and write in only four paragraphs. Now you'll see in a moment that it writes in more paragraphs than that. I tried to fiddle with the prompt, but it didn't pick up on the only four paragraphs. Include the following criteria. And then I just put in the criteria that you acquire for a C. Now, obviously, ChatGPT is going to do these things automatically because they're things like grammatically correct, spelling, punctuation. I do find that when I create a C exemplar, it's usually too high and I need to go in, take out some of the noun groups, take out some of the interesting beginnings to the sentence and kind of dumb it down a little bit so that it is a true C standard. Obviously, this is much quicker than me trying to write a whole story from scratch. Similarly, it's not in the four paragraph structure that I want it in, but I can easily go in and edit that. It takes me significantly less time than trying to write a C standard just out of my head. So I still find this quicker. Now what, Ch now what ChatGPT is very good at is writing the A exemplars. So again, I just put in the next prompt to create the story, but at an A standard, and then I put in all of the criteria. I will say when you're making the checklist, sometimes our GTMJs are more written in teacher talk. So I do try and include things. If it says descriptive language, you I add into that noun groups, precise verbs, so that the checklist that you're going to be using a lot with the students is written in a language that they understand what that criteria means and what they need to include to achieve that criteria. So that the checklist, so the exciting bit, how do we get that specific feedback for our students quickly and easily? So the after you've generated your table of criteria, you stay in that same chat with ChatGPT and you use a prompt. Please use the criteria above to give a year five student feedback based on the following fantasy text. Place the feedback in the second column of the tables. Following that prompt, you paste in the student's text and you can see ChatGPT generates a table with the criteria on one side and feedback on the other side. I've tried this with all different texts and it does generate specific feedback. In some areas, I found that it would tell the student that they needed to correct their spelling or grammar. And I found that I needed an additional prompt to say something like, give specific examples of spelling errors or punctuation errors or grammar errors. And ChatGPT was able to regenerate the feedback, giving that specific feedback from the student's text. Obviously, telling a student that they need to relook at their spelling isn't particularly helpful. But if you're giving them specifics, that will help the student improve their writing. Also, if they had no figurative language, it will say to them, um, you could use more figurative language and it reminds them what that is, simile, metaphor or personification. So generally, once I've generated the student's feedback, I start at the beginning because, of course, that's the C criteria moving down to the A and where they start having gaps in their criteria that they're not meeting, that's where I'm gonna highlight the sheet and that becomes their goal. After the midpoint check, again, I generate their feedback. Hopefully they've achieved their goal from the pretest and I highlight new goals that they're gonna focus on moving into the final assessment. So as you can see, it's quite quick and easy, just generating the text and putting them in, and you can do one student after another. I hope you found this video useful. If your students are handing in their writing in handwritten form, you can use Google Lens to turn it into text and then just follow the same steps as in the video. If you've enjoyed this video and you think it will be helpful, please hit the subscribe button. In future videos, I'll be showing you how to generate your own rubrics. So subscribe so you get alerts for my new series of videos. Remember to balance your work and well-being. This has been AI for Teachers, and I'm Jen Twydale.